Hey everyone, this is me Rachit and welcome to yet another day in the mock interview series wherein I try to solve problems like how I would approach them in real coding interviews, how I would talk with the interviewer, what are the kind of things which I keep into mind and I hope this series is fun to watch. Let's start with today's problem. We are going to solve complement of base 10 integer which by title itself gives the essence of the problem. Let's read the problem quickly. Every non-negative integer n has a binary representation. For example, 5 can be represented as 101 in binary, 11 as 1011 in binary and so on. Note that for except n equal to 0, there are no leading zeros in any binary representation. Makes sense. And the complement of a binary representation is the number in binary you get when changing every 1 to a 0 and 0 to 1. So you have to flip the bits. And for a given integer in base 10, we have to return the complement in base 10. So if the input is 5, we have to return 2 because 5 is 101 in binary and the complement becomes 0, 1, 0, which becomes 2 in base 10. So we have given number in base 10 and that's I think what the function is, right? So this is the first thing that I would have confirmed with the interviewer. We are getting an input integer and we have to return. So I think uh, it's straight quite forward. What we can do is we can find out all the bits in n, 0, 1, 0, 1, whatever the sequence is. For every 0 in our corresponding answer, we will insert 1. For every 1 in our original bit, we will insert 0 in our corresponding new bit. And in this way, we will return the answer. So answer is 0 initially, we return it over here. And over here, I can write the code. So while n is positive, do something, do what? I'm coming to that. Find out the current digit. Current bit actually should be curve bit. And that is n and 1 and then I can divide n by 2. So I am iterating on the bits. Um, least significant bit will be iterated first. So that's what I'm doing. And what this is essentially doing is in the bit representation, I'm shifting towards right side. I'm decreasing the bit size. So if my number was 101, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, uh, after dividing by 2, what essentially is happening is I'm deleting this bit. So I'm right shifting my number. So this gets deleted irrespective of whether this is one and zero. We can also do this as something like this. Do a right shift one times. So in this way and next time when you do an and one, this will give you the second bit. And then you will again do a one more shift. The next time you will get the third bit over here and so on. So I'm iterating on each bit. And then uh, I'm, so for every bit that I get, I have to insert that uh, to my answer in that corresponding position, right? And what happens is if you have something like this, if this is your number, so it's nothing but essentially you are summing up powers of two. So this is two to the power zero, then two to the power one does not exist, two to the power two does not exist, then two to the power three and four exist. So this is same as two to the power four plus two to the power three plus two to the power zero, right? So uh, when we are at the current bit, we need to associate, uh, we need to have that multiplier that what we have right now. So initially multiplier is one. And what I can do is answer is nothing but, or actually answer plus equal to multiplier into current bit, into one minus current bit, because you have to flip it off. All right, so this looks good to me. And then we can um, multiply the multiplier by two. So initially we have one, when we come to the next bit, the multiplier would be two, then it would be four, then it would be eight. Then in the next iteration, it will be 16, the multiplier value and our current bit will be one. And in that case, the multiplier is basically handling which power of two we are currently at in the iteration. And of course, whenever there is one, we actually add nothing because one minus one becomes zero. And only when we have a zeroth bit in our initial number, only that, is the point where we add something to our answer. So essentially we are flipping one and zeros over here and multiplier is taking care of the which power of two we are at. So this uh, should work. The only base case which I see is of course, if n is zero, then I should return one. Other than that answer is zero, multiplier is one. I'm iterating on the bits, updating my multiplier. And similarly, we can follow this notation. Like here, we are we basically doing an integer division by two or right shifting a number. Similarly, you can do the similar thing with multiplication as well. Instead of multiplying by two, you can do a left shift now with one. And this will still work. So I'm sure that this should work now. Let's do the sum bit. And it's accepted. Great. 
talking about the space complexity of course there is like order one space we are not doing anything fancy but we do have a time complexity of log 2n so the time complexity is log n to the base 2 so we call it log 2n um, because this we are iterating on the number of bits and if you really talk about the constraints we have number up to 10 to the power 9 so this becomes um, 32 bits in all which you can also call as, as constant time if you want but it's good to be explicit with the interviewer and say that it will take log 2n time complexity order log 2n so uh this was pretty easy guys i hope uh, you had fun we can of of course make this a bit shorter like this code you're doing we are dealing with a bunch of things actually let's see if we can make this shorter uh instead of multiplier like handling it this way we can actually do something like um let's see we can do something like while our multiplier is less than or equal to our number um, what I'm essentially trying to do is uh, my multiplier is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 and so on and on. If you talk about powers of 2, their bit representation is all zeros except one bit will be 1. That depends on which power of 2 it is. For example, if it's 8, then the third bit would be 1, rest everything will be 0. Now what I'm trying to say is um, how can we use it to our advantage is nothing but if multiplier, if the AND operation of multiplier and a number if this result is zero, all right? So if this overall result is zero, it means that this corresponding bit is zero in our answer. So that means we should add it in our answer. And that's about it. And then we can multiply, the multiplier can be increased or multiplied by two. So I'm iterating on powers two and I'm doing an AND operation. If the result is zero, it means that that particular bit for which like multiplier is always a power of two let's say is third power of two so if the third bit is zero in n i am adding eight to my answer which makes sense right whenever i encounter a zero in my bit position in my n value in the input integer i should add the corresponding power of two in my answer and that's exactly what we are doing this looks a bit simpler to read as well and this will still work because we have handled the base case also correctly over here so i can quickly submit it it should work and it's still working accepted i mean we can probably go ahead and make it more shorter actually what you can do is um, one interesting bit that i want to share with you is x xor 0 is x right similarly x xor 1 is negation of x so we can use this what we can do is we can generate a mask if let's say your number has 13 bits so if n has 13 bits what we can do is we can do an xor with one 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 coming 13 times in so that's what i'm trying to say 13 bits all once and if you do um xor with n it will actually do exactly what you need so uh how do you find out how many bits does a number have of course it's very easy you can do a log to n so um number of bits is nothing but log to n plus one why i mean this is normal math um, for any base like if you talk about 10 base right 100 what is if you talk about 100 number in decimal which is 10 base what is log 10 of 100 it's 2 add 1 to it it becomes 3 it gives you the number of digits necessary to represent a number in this particular base similarly to represent any number in base 2 you take the log 2 of that number with uh, you take the logarithm of that number on base 2 and you add 1 to it so that's how it works now what we can do is um we can say our mask is nothing but one slash uh, i'm basically generating the power of two or you can do a right shift which will give us that so this is nothing this is same as power of two number of bits so this will be one and then all zeros all right if i do this it's still not my mask because it's still just one and all zeros if i do negative one now what happens is it was one and all zeros but since i did a subtraction now it becomes all ones and how many times once is coming exactly number of bits times so my mask is ready and i can simply return mask xor n and i don't need anything so this is also going to work this is another way of writing this code um this should work i can go ahead and submit this as well let's see accept it so there are multiple ways of doing the same thing but i hope you you know had some fun with bit manipulation um if some things are not you know 
you are doing this for the first time i will suggest you to play around and write like see out statements to understand how this is functioning and what exactly is it giving take some pen and paper scribble zeros ones how xor works and all those things i hope you enjoyed this video this was pretty easy but i hope this was informative in the sense you learned a bit about bit manipulation tricks the time and space complexity is also very straightforward log and time and order one space i'll see you in the next one guys uh, i hope you are enjoying this series if you enjoy short written content on software engineering make sure to follow me on linkedin and twitter for pictures follow me on instagram and for programming memes again on instagram with the account i can't name variables so guys this channel has been extensively talking about data structures algorithms coding interviews even sharing my own coding interview experiences with you guys so if this is something which interests you or you are passionate about make sure to like this video subscribe to this channel and most importantly hit the bell icon it really means a lot so that's pretty much about it guys i'll see you in the next one happy coding till then bye bye